Okay, where this video begins, you should actually already have a graph made. It should look something like this. Uh, volts on V on the left. I in milliamps going this way. You should already have a title at the top. Uh, you can call it whatever. I called it Ohm's Law. Underneath it, we've got volts in, or potential in volts versus current in milliamps is actually our graph, our name and date over in the corner. Now, the only thing that's different, you should have three lines on your paper. And I only drew one line on mine because I didn't want to get too cluttered just for showing you. Now, the next thing we're going to do, it's going to all be on your graph. So, next thing we want to do is, you've already got your lines drawn, and it should look similar to this. It doesn't have to touch any of the dots. Ooh, mine hit that one. But your line should go through the center of all your dots. So that's kind of what your graph should look like. All right. So now let's see if we can go back, find the slope. To find the slope, look along this line for points where the line you drew intersects. And when I say intersect, I mean a perfect like if there's the lines on the graph, the line you drew should go pretty much dead right through the center of those lines. We will find two of these points. Now, I'll go ahead and give you a heads up. They won't be on five, six, seven. You're not going to find any on these main lines because you've got data points on these lines. Do not ever pick a data point as a slope point. That would be bad. So please don't do that. You basically, you just made it, there was no point in even doing the graph at that point by doing that. So I'm going to start looking across my line and find two points. And I guarantee you I can find more than two. A lot of times people are like, I can't find one. Wow, I've actually found one all the way down here at the very, very bottom of the graph. So I'm going to make that one of my points. And notice, my line doesn't go through the origin. It may not. This is not the perfect world of math where all functions hit the origin. So, But make sure when you do draw your line, it does go all the way across your paper like this. Uh, sometimes that's actually meaningful to know where you cross the axis like this. All right. So now I've got one point here. I want to find the next point somewhere up in here. I want to see if I can find one away. Heck, I could find one up here. It doesn't matter. What I don't want to do is pick two that are right next to each other. What was the point of drawing this huge graph if I'm going to pick two points that are basically right adjacent to each other? So I'm going to start my search somewhere up in this area. And I'm going to keep going until I find... Oh, my goodness. Look at you. You are so pretty. Bam, that one is beautiful. And so now I've got two slope points. So you need to do this to all three of the lines on your graph. And again, your points might be up in here, but we want at least two points. And I like these because I can keep them both in the graph at the same time. Now I want to label what these are. And when I mean label them, I want to label them in terms of X and Y. So this would be X1 and Y1. And up here, for this one, I'll have an X2 and a Y2 up on this one. So if I look on this X, and my X is pretty simple. This is 10, so these are 1 each. So that's 1, 2, 3. So that's over 3, comma, up. My ups are 0 0.1, 0 0.2. So I'm up to, so that's 3 and 0.2. So that was easy. Now, to go to this next point, let's see. I am, there's 20, 20 there's 25 at this point, And I am 3 past here. So 25, 26, 27, 28. So this point is over 28 and up. So here's 4 is this line. So 4.1, 4.2, 4 4.3, 4.4 is where I'm up to. Now, what you're going to need to do is go through, and you could pause the video at this point, 
You need to go through and find these locations. You need to find your X and Y coordinates on all three lines. So, go do that. Get your X, Y coordinates. Have you got them yet? Oh no, it's a finger race. Oh, sorry. Okay, so hopefully you've got those coordinates found now. So now, somewhere on your graph, wherever you've got room, it could be up in here, it could be over here. I've got all this room down here. I need to do these calculations for slope. Now, you're going to do the same calculation three times. But let's go ahead and write the equation down once. So I'm going to go ahead and write M for slope equals change in Y, Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Now, you're going to do that three times. You don't have to rewrite the equation three times. So you should have three sets of calculations through here. Now, so for me, I'm going to have 4.4 minus 0.2 on top divided by 28 minus 3 on bottom. That's going to be my calculation that I'm going to be getting. Uh, I'm going to do mine in the calculator all at once. So I'm going to put the top in parentheses, 4.4 minus 0.2, close parentheses, divided by the bottom in parentheses, 28 minus 3, close parentheses, equals. That answer, that answer is 0.168. Now, the answer is 0.168, but the thing is, the resistor wasn't 0.168. Since this was milliamps, I need to fix this answer. My answer is really 168 ohms. So just move your decimal over three places and it'll fix the answer. We could have graphed it in amps, but if we'd have done that, all these numbers would have been like 0 .020, 0 .030. It would have made the graph a whole lot harder. So this way, all we have to do at the end is move the decimal three places. We still got the right answer. Now you should have on your paper three of these calculations. Equals, equals equals, equals. So you should have three of these calculations on here. Now, for the most part in your lab, your resistors were 100, 223, 30, uh, 1,470. Those were pretty much what you had choices of. So again, your resistors in your lab, y'all had 100, some of you had, some of you had 220s, some of you had 330s and 470s. Some of you had a 1000. If you're unsure which one you got, look at your color code. On the bottom of your data table, you actually have a chart. That chart tells you what your resistors were supposed to be. For example, if you had a brown, black, brown resistor, that means you were one, zero and one zero. So you had a 100. Uh, if you had orange, orange, brown, that means you were three, three, one zero. So this literally means one zero on the end. Red means two zeros. Orange means three zeros. None of you had one that ended in orange. So like the 1000 would be one, zero, and then you need two more zeros for a thousand. So that should be brown, black, red would be one thousand. So anyway, that's how you can get what your numbers were. But again, your numbers had to be one of those because that was the only resistors you were given in the lab. So your final answer will probably have three sets of numbers that might look like this. 333 and let's say 965. So your final graph will have three sets of answers that look like this on there. That's what I'm expecting to see. A graph with three lines, three sets of calculations on it. Now, I need you to get out another sheet of paper. At the top of this page, I need you to write 
sample calculations. And of course, I will now put my name and my date on that sheet of paper. All right. So to do the sample calculations, the only other calculation, we've already done the slope calculation. So the only calculation left to make is a percent error. That would be E minus A over A times 100. So here's the thing is, uh, let's say that that first resistor I had, let's say this one, let's say that this one, I'm going to write it right here. Let's say this one was supposed to be a 220, but I got 168. So I'm going to do my percent error. That 220 is my actual. That's what it really should have been. And like, let's say this one should have been 330. There's my actual for that one. This one was supposed to be a thousand. There's my actual in that one. So I'm going to go through now and just do this percent error. And I'll just go ahead and do it three times. So my percent error on the first one would be E, my experiment, which is this 168. So 168 minus, it should have been 220 over 220 times 100. All my units, my ohms cancel out. So I've got 168 minus 220 divided by 220. Now this should be absolute values. Excuse me for forgetting that. So like my answer says negative 0.236. Drop the negative sign. Still got to times it by 100 though. So my answer is again absolute value, so not negative. Do not write negative. So my answer is 23.6%, which actually is not a very good percent error. This lab, you should actually have 5, 10% maybe. Matter of fact, some of you will actually have like 1% error. Some of y'all did really good jobs in this lab. So you should end up with three of these percent error calculations. All right. Now, for the rest of the lab, you'll of course have a title. Don't forget name and date. You should have a purpose. The purpose of this lab lab was to determine the resistance of three resistors. All right. Leave that there for a second. Again, feel free to pause whenever you'd like to. All right. The materials. The materials, you had a power supply. You had three resistors. Three resistors. You had an ammeter. And the only other thing you had was an electrical leads. Now, then you would have your procedures. One, two, three. Now, your procedures for this lab you should really probably only have about three or four. It's a pretty easy lab. Conclusion. Conclusion. Look at the purpose. To determine the resistance of three resistors. So, tell me the resistance. 
and percent errors. That's all you should have. I found the resistance of the first resistor to be 168, which is a percent error of 23.8%. 20, That's what that should look like. Your source of error well of course that part's going to be up to you. Now your final report is going to have you're going to have in your final report you're going to have the report itself a sketch and at this point, you should be going, what does the sketch look like? You should have a data table. You should have a graph. So this is going to be a big report. And you should have a sample calculation page. So five parts to this report, each one with a name and date on the top right-hand corner. All right. In terms of the graph, if you're going, oh, excuse me, of the sketch, what the crap should my sketch look like? Basically, put a title on your sketch page. So, put a title up there. Of course, your name and date over here. Now, this is what your sketch is going to look like. You'll need a ruler. But basically, what you're going to do is you just draw a picture like you've seen me draw. What does that represent? That's your power supply. This represents what? The resistor. And then over here, we'll draw this circle, and in the center, put an A, which represents the ammeter. Now, all I got to do is connect the three. I'm going to draw this one first. Da, 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 stormy weather. And give me a little finish off here. Da, 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 da. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. There. And now I will come back in here and I'm going to label this. Although somebody should be able to figure it out. Oh, look at this. This is how a sketch should look. Ammeter. Uh, draw me a little arrow here. Choo. Draw me a little line. There's my resistor. And then the last thing, I'll draw me an arrow. Oh, this thing's magnificent. And I will call this the power supply it's a good name for band oh wait there's already a band called air supply never mind so your sketch page will look pretty much like nothing but this it's the easiest sketch you'll probably ever get to draw that's what I like about electricity labs because we've got symbols to represent everything so you don't have to try and draw a picture of the meter with the little knobs and all that kind of stuff and the switch on there no this is all you've got to draw all right, so again, the report page, the sketch. The next page will be that data table that you had, the one with all the colors and stuff on the bottom that look like this. Then you will turn in your graph, again, with three lines. And then your very, very last page of your report will be this sample calculation page. If you have any questions, I'm sorry because this is only a recording so I can't actually hear you. But hey, I love you all and I'm thinking kind thoughts of you. That's kind of crazy looking smiley face. Ah, what, what? So anyway, 